Well, it is a new morning here in Ireland, the hills of Ireland anyway, and we are on our way to the hill of Tara, I believe. But if you look out here, we are in sheep country. Hey, can someone come visit? As you can see, they're very social. Not really, but the sheep are all here. And then in the distance, there's more sheep on the hill. Fog's rolling in, or should I say that it's breaking out? Not really sure. Anyway, we're on farm country. We might stop off and on along the way. Join us, let's see what we see. So this is where I get my wool coats. Driving on some boondock road. Holy shnikes. Yeah, this is a two way. And if you're wondering if I'm already sick, I am. Uh, hold on to your lives. This supposedly was a shortcut. Okay. We're at the meetings. Oh my god, we got out of the car. I literally feel like I'm going to throw up. It could be from that full Irish breakfast. Let me show you what I ate this morning. Holy. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's the combination of all of that food. Well, so before you start your day, this is what I ate. Got some potatoes here. Some proper Irish ham. Sunny side up. Beans. Sausages. Black pudding. Uh, I forget what that is. A whole tomato, mushrooms, and then a loaf of bread. Yep, proper. So where we've come to right now for a few minutes is Thomas More Memorial Park. Uh, I wish I remembered who Thomas More was. <laughs> oh, wasn't he a poet? A translator, a balladeer, a singer. Look at where we are. This is known as the meeting of the water. And if we go down, which we will do, take a look over here. I gotta admit, I'm a little bit groggy today as well. The, the uh, That place where we stayed, the, it was just very thin walls and the people's room next to us one their door had like cracks in it and they weren't like quiet talkers they were loud ones obviously and god i couldn't sleep and between that and then there was this other guy that's right and then the people that actually run the place they are um they have dogs so you'd hear the dogs barking throughout the night all right before we look at the water let's read this beautiful piece right here. I'm sure it's beautiful. There is not in the wide world a valley so sweet as that vale in whose bosom the bright waters meet. Oh, the last rays of feeling in life must depart ere the bloom of the valley shall fade from my heart. Sweet vale of Avoca, how calm could I rest in thy bosom of shade with the friends I love best. Where the storms that we feel in this cold world should cease, and our hearts, like thy waters, be mingled in peace. Huh. Sir Thomas More. Well, I calm, sir. And check out the water, folks. You see all the ivy right here? Beautiful. Rushing water coming down. And then when we go over this way, little life raft here to protect me if I fall in, which I hope I don't. You know what I w expected to see, but there's not? I expected to see like some fisher people, some fishermen, but there's not. So this is the Vale of Avoca, or Avaca. What a beautiful spot. Pretty cool, huh? I've said this reference before, but between this right here, it reminds me of maybe this was what 
It reminds me a little bit of Rivendale when I would imagine that in my head. I'll say this is a pretty uh, wayside point. Like, I mean, like, clearly it's not a huge tourist attraction. I mean, it should be, but. All right, let's get back on the road. Clearly we're on the main roads. Or should I say not so much? God, how are these two? These are girl pheasants? All right, well, yeah, keep, the, keep going. So you get close enough to them. Hello, pheasants. You're okay. See you later. I'm focusing more on the view. We're outside Dublin now. It's about a mile. So we get off onto a different highway en route to the hill of Tara or Tara. I'm not sure how we pronounce it. We're driving into the the mist now. Maybe there'll be gorillas up ahead. Um, we just went through a toll booth, which was not necessarily an expected uh, thing. One, we because when you're on the Dublin part of the highway, it's you just drive through it and they charge your card. Well, this one was an actual physical toll booth, but we forgot that it was on the right side, meaning so there was confusion to where the toll booth person was, and then you could pay with change or with a card and that it, it was very confusing and complicated. It wasn't that expensive, it was a Euro 60, but um, if you're ever out and about doing this, just realize you do have to pay tolls if you're driving. But uh, it's kind of funny though, because we're out again, now we're on flatter roads, but you can still see sheep pretty much everywhere. Um, so still, uh, we're 12 minutes out from the hill of Terra which if I remember right is from the Bronze Age, one of those ages, and it is a major, um, it's where the Sword of Destiny is, folks, the Sword of Destiny. Well, we've arrived. It's kind of a funny uh, area though, because once you get off the highway, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, but then this hill where we're going back there in a minute, it's pretty crowded. Uh, relatively speaking though, of course, but we're going down or uh, right now We're gonna go down this hill ever so briefly a short walk because there's this funny sign I saw coming in and It made me laugh And I wish I could zoom in for you, but across that way across the field and over there's a uh, there's a watchtower So see if you look very carefully see that right there There's the watchtower Awesome. I'll say one of the things I really appreciate about being here in the country of Ireland is how lush and green everything is. Uh, I did not expect it to be so cold though. Uh, it's in the 40s right now. For some reason I thought it'd be warmer and I, I did not pack appropriately. All right, so we've gotten to my sign right here. <laughs> there it is. Is this another Irish joke? Like, what the hell does this mean? Huh. Well, I guess we'll go back and check out the real stuff. So, I'm supposed to be walking up, but, uh, you know, one of the things, the joys of traveling is trying to find a bathroom. Luckily, I found one right here. Look at this. It says, gents. And since I'm a gentleman, obviously, I could use this. But uh, this is kind of cute right here. This is the Tara Hill of he Heroes. And look at these hats. I love them. Maybe I should buy this one right here. And this store screams me though. Look, I got this. Got some salt lamps here. Uh, the statue. There's crystal collection. There's a fairy tale. There's a tarot thing right there. Some Wiccan boxes, spells. And this guy though. This guy wants to come home. This is a cool little spot. I still we still haven't gone up the hill yet, but. Uh, they have a cafe here. They have like a little hobbit hole right here. And then right across the way is this old 
bookshop, and then there's like um, there's like a craft store, but right behind it, and we'll cut this, we'll do this like afterward. There's this, there's this old church that's just crying to be checked out. But uh, I gotta go get a coat on. My God, I'm, I don't know. It's just it, it's cold. So we are at the uh, the birthplace of Pagan to Ireland, I think is what we just read. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, so this is a giant burial mound. And uh, back before the times of Christ, they would do a lot of pagan ceremonies here. And then as the years went by, these burial mounds, you would become crowned here. If you were crowned here, you were the king of this entire land. Uh, I don't know why we're heading towards the church first, but we are. <laughs> during, during the warmer months, this is a visitor center, which means it's probably locked. I see a padlock on it because there are T's. Yeah, see, do you see the padlock? <laughs> We're not even going to try. Still a pretty view. Wow, it is nippy. Up the steps of whatever you want to call it. I love the Celtic cross. You can see that directly right there in front of us. We'll cut over. But the old style... Oh, it's kind of eerie, isn't it? Yeah. Well, or it's just the cold cutting into us. But if you look right here, see, here's your old style cross. Well, the Celtic cross. I used to have one of these as a gift for a kid. Not the burial stone, of course, but the stone itself. Look at that view, though. It's cool. Whew. Chilly. Uh, okay. What are we going to scale? I see the burial mounds. They're over here. How are we going to do this? I think we have to... God. Uh, with the crows over here pretending we're in a scene from Resident Evil, I figured out who this guy is. It's St. Patrick. Of course St. Patrick's here. You do know there are no snakes here in Ireland. Because of that guy pushed them all out. Had nothing to do with the climate. Okay. So with this being a burial mound of 28 mounds, unlike in Poland where they just make one giant one, they have banned uh, people from cycling in this area. Rightfully so. I actually was pretty happy to see that because I think I saw a jogger but, you know, if this is, like, one of the most important landmarks here in the country of Ireland, people shouldn't be tearing up graves with their bikes. Right. So if it was a clearer day, you could see for miles that way. I like the mix of pagan traditions and uh, Catholic traditions here. You got your crosses that are littered throughout. And of course, the fact that they put that church right there as well, next to such an important area. We have to go through it? Yeah. yeah. Oh good, they have stuff written. So this is the mound of the hostages. Wow, okay then. The hostages <laughs> were buried here. And you all can't tell this, but it is bloody cold. Like, God. It is... Where we started off this morning seemed... It's, it, it was warmer south of here. I don't know if it's the mist or what. And this is a little underwhelming. I think that's the thing we're targeting. That's the grave we're targeting? Yeah. Okay. We'll just head to it.
So we made it to the royal seat. Uh, if you look right here, you can see the indentations. So these were the central mounds. This this is the top of the Hill of Tara. And there's actually a tombstone they put over here. We'll walk down to see, walk up and down to see if we can take a look at it. But I assume. Uh oh. Gotta be careful. There's a bunch of sheep over here that are coming to greet us to tell us the history of this land. They want us to be the head of their flock. I know. Is that funny? They're like. <laughs> they are, though. They literally are coming towards us. There was a donkey over here that was like cooing at us. Is it the word cooing? Do donkeys coo? Yeah, oh, you, okay. This is why I wanted to come here in the first place. It was to touch this stone. This is the spot. And we're going to get to the side and touch it because that's why I came to touch this mysterious... Forget what they were calling it on the website. It was like... Do you remember what they called it? Well, there's a dog over there. He might know the answers. Hello, we're touching you, buddy. The heart of Ireland is right here, folks. It's right over here. Right as this raven decides to go to the bathroom next to us. And the sheep in the background have turned around because they know who the royalty are here. We're in... The tradition of King Arthur, which is not here in Ireland. They had the Knights of the Round Table and Camelot and those things. Over here in Ireland, where King Arthur pulled the sword out of the stone. Well, I'll tell you what, this is better. This is the Stone of Destiny. That's right. That's right. And we are standing on the hollowed lands where they crowned the kings of Ireland. And meanwhile, we are freezing our tails off. And I am more interested in the sheep across the way. Which I'm pretty sure they feed up here because you can see where the worn path is. So I think at night when no one's around, the sheep come up here and they worship the stone of destiny. The army of sheep, they're waiting for us. And I think we're gonna go get back in the car and see what else we can find. As we race away from these hollowed steps, Look at this. Look what I found. It's the way into the, into the mound of hostages. There's really nothing special inside there. Except for warmth. Yes, warmth. I can't explain to you how cold we are right now. And this is from someone who likes the cold. Well, one of us. So nestled across the countryside, on our way to Rush, we're rushing to get to Rush, or Roosh, uh, we found this, uh, well, what remains of a church in Fingal County, of all places. And since you know how much I love cemeteries, I figured it was worth taking a little look right here. And it's interesting because this cemetery is very, very new. So this was uh, Bald Degin Church and Tower. And the church dated from the 14th century, actually. And this was simply a parish church. Uh, it wasn't a nunnery or, or anything like that. But it, it's pretty cool how they just put... I guess they, they put the cemetery right here in the backdrop of it. Well, this is very recent. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Willie. Wow. No, I gotta say, to me anyways, 
these ruins, like some of them have different vibes to it. And like this one, I get it, it's a cold day, but it feels like, I get it, this was a place of worship. I don't feel that though. Ah, the hand of the king. <laughs> wow, but I'm more fascinated by the fact they just... So, I mean, you can see how it was a tower. Well, we'll just focus on the views right now. So directly over there, that's that's where Rush is. That's where we're going. I hope it's not a letdown. It's, it's, it's uh, funny to me being in these different areas because, like... When I was in Dublin, I expected stuff to be nice. And then when I was in Bray, Bray was a delight. But then it's like, even last in our trip to um, to the best secret village in all of Ireland, it wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't as impressed as I should have been probably. No, sorry, I wasn't as impressed as I should. I wasn't that impressed. There you go. So... But I think, uh, you know, when should I ever come back to this country? I got to go to like to Galway Bay and to Cork and stuff like that. But all right, we'll hit back on the road. Well, we have made it to Rush, the home of some, it's a peninsula of yew trees, whatever that means. More importantly though, you can see this giant, there's like an island directly in front of us to your left and the Irish Sea in front as well. Sometimes I don't have anything profound to say. This is one of those times. times. We are at the harbor. It's right over here. I'll show you too momentarily. But uh, I'm more intrigued by their awesome artwork. Check this out. First of all, it's a public restroom, so that's cool. But they built like a pirate ship right here, right on the harbor. But look at this. This is so much better than the stuff we saw in Bray the other day. I mean, look at this. This is awesome. And there's no red-headed person that's attacking anyone. Look at the shark. So well done. Well done to this, to this artist. I think we're going to go eat in a gastropub right here across the street. It's funny, it's like you drive through these towns and one thing I've noticed about this part of Ireland, or just in general, there's no like real places for you to turn off. Now this harbor, Rush Harbor right here, this dates back to the 1400. Um, we'll see if we can get a better view. It's funny, cause you know, you look on maps for like cool stuff and I looked at this map and maybe the map looked cooler than the actual location. So here's the harbor itself. You can see it's low tide right now. There is one boat in that's kind of like chained up. It's almost like a dog getting ready to go out to play, but it can't until later. But here's the harbor, this 14th century harbor. And again, you have an island off in the distance. It's very peaceful, but it's, 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 it's a small, it's quaint. You can tell just even like the buildings that we went by. It just is, you know, it's kind of, it's definitely like, whoa, let's say more working class. And then we'll cross right here. All right, let's cross. Because the buildings are darker. They're not as lively. Hey, look, the Guinness is the proud sponsor of Ireland. We ordered, well ordered some apple tart because it's lunchtime and uh, some proper seafood chowder with cod and prawns which hopefully it's good but more importantly this is what I say so we got some tea here and what I like about being in this country and actually in Europe in general is when you get tea instead of just getting a cup like we do in the states where you just throw a freaking bag into a cup of tea here it's proper you get a nice big tea kettle and you can enjoy it uh, so there's the very healthy um, apple tort compared to the more traditional seafood chowder that smells like a bisque, by the way. And if you look at this right here, oh, hold on, there you go. Got some 
shrimp and cod. Mm. This is ice cream with something else. Ooh, Sorry. I got mussels in here too. Yes. I'm gonna do it with a prawn, which we call shrimp back in the States. Oh, I can't. Okay, right, here we go. Look at that. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Hot. It's hot. But it's good. It's good. Well, that was a productive meal. But we must bid this part of Ireland adieu. Even though the sun has come out and is beckoning us to go venture down to greater and better places. I mean, we should end on a high note with that food. Especially after freezing our tails off in... Um, what was that again? <laughs> what was the name of the... Oh, you know... The Hill of Tara. Or the Hill of Tara. We haven't figured that out pronunciation. So anyway, until next time, guys. Peace.